In Bielsa, there were abductions. In Kogi, there were killings. In Bonu, over 30 people died. Now, we hear that troops in Yobe State have threatened to abandon duty. Why? They say they are poorly treated by the Nigerian army. And the national leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, says it is too early to talk about the zonal winner of the 2023 elections. Is it really? This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. It seems insecurity in Nigeria might have taken a different turn this year as due to maltreatment by the Nigerian army, some soldiers say that they have been on counter-insurgency missions since 2016 and have not been redeployed since then. In response to this, the theater commander of Operation Lafayette Dole, General Olushagun Adeni, dismissed the soldiers' complaints, stating that the country was at war and that all hands need to be on deck to win the war. If these claims are true, could these issues be part of the factors inhibiting our victory in the fight against terrorism? We also know that 30 people died in Bonu Bridge Explosion. This is aside the situation in Kogi on Sunday and deaths in Niger State. We'll be looking at the bickering between the APC and the PDP on this. Joining me to discuss this is a legal practitioner, Daniel Odupe. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, I was trying to recap uh, during the introduction that on Friday there were deaths in Kogi, uh, on Sunday there were deaths in Niger State, and there were reports about the death on Monday in Bornu State that took about 30 lives, although the figure is being disputed at this time. But the fact remains that people lost their lives during, from Friday to uh, today. Now, while this is being disputed and it's before us, the PDP and the APC are at each other's throats. The APC is saying that, the PDP rather, is saying that the APC is being responsible for what is called renewed insurgency attacks um, in the country, banditry, kidnapping, and all of that. And then the APC is saying, um, the PDP, they are all, they're full of lies, falsehood, and all of that. That is not even my question. My question is, is this bickering necessary and healthy at this time? We talk about healthy politics when lives are being lost. Some persons are saying it's insensitive. What's your take? <clears throat> I think I agree that it's insensitive. Um, it's really unfortunate that we allow ourselves, we drag ourselves to the ground, we play politics over lives. You know, it's been like that. That's been the nature of our politics for a while now. I think it's totally uncalled for. Um, Nigerians expect responsible um, opposition. They, they expect facts and figures. They expect, you know, we, we don't want politics and, you know, politics over, over um, something as serious as security. It's, it's way too serious. And that we want, we, we, are, we are happy that, you know, questions are being asked. We're happy that somebody is putting ABC on its toes and this admission on its toes. But we want it to be done the right way. We accept facts. We don't want them to play to the gallery. We don't want them to, you know, you know, make it sound, you know, all sound, you know, loud noise and all that. That's not what we want. We want facts and figures, you know, and we appreciate that from the opposition. And not just um, PDP, but every other party. That's the kind of opposition that we expect. That's a kind of, you know... Considering the spate of attacks we've had since uh, Friday, it seems to be on the increase. The kidnapping in Bielsa I've mentioned already some of these things that happened and the deaths that occurred. If you just oppose that with the press conference that was given by uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, that the security situation has improved since 2015. Where we are at now, do you share that same position that was shared just last week by the Minister of Information? Has the security situation been any better since 2015? No, it does not. Um, in my opinion, it's, not, it's my opinion, it really has not become any better. What we have is a case where um, those who are serving the government of the day are trying to paint a good picture. And it's really unfortunate. That's not what we want. You know, I understand that the nature of their work required them to say, you know, things to be very positive and to, to, to embellish facts and what have you. But as, as a neutral observer, as a Nigerian, most importantly, I do not think the situation has, has, has gotten any better. I think we are, it's still as bad as it was, you know, in 2015 before they came into power at all. And it just goes to show that, look, 
you know, um, it's easy to it's easy to, to be in the opposition. It's easy to talk and criticize them. But the nature of the work, the nature of the work is is gruesome. It's it's you have to rule your sleeves. You have to you have to be in it fully. You cannot afford to play politics. You cannot be blaming. You cannot be doing any kind of blame game. It's a serious work, and you know we are far from where we need to be. We we have not really recorded any improvement, in my opinion. So what, what, what should these parties be doing to assist the Buhari-led administration as against the, yes, people are expected to oppose certain things. Some are saying this is going too far at this point. Something else should be engaging the party's attention as per the security situation in this country. What could this possibly be for the two parties to help the administration uh, fight um, insecurity? For me, what, what I think is important is, is fortuitness. You know, don't don't um, don't paint a, an untrue picture. Um, do not engage in what is it called in journalism now. You know, fake news and what have you. All of those things avoid all of that. But paint acu as accurate as possible, facts and figures. You know, state the fact as it is, and you know, and always be constructive in your criticism. I think that's what we expect. We don't. We already know. Let the people be the judge of the performance of administration. We already know how bad it is. You know, so you don't want to. Play to the gallery, or but we just it's uh, it's all about you know painting the true picture, you know saying the things as they are, and then providing a way forward. If you are in power, what what would you do differently? What have you done? What, what did you do when you were in power? What what are you, what, what is the way for? Because what I just see is that you know they're trying to run it in and drum it in to, to, to Nigerians that look this administration is doing woefully and they're not good enough. Well, I mean that's easy to say, but we we want to provide a way forward, you know, because I mean whether we like the not twenty twenty three is another corner, you know, so we we want, we want to see alternative policies. You know, you know, constructive criticism. That's what we ask for. That's what we uh, talking about a way forward, um, we have soldiers in Yobe State. Uh, that's part of our introduction this evening, um, saying that they've been um, with the insurgency fight since 2016. And unlike their counterparts, who they allege have godfathers in the system, they've remained in the same position. Uh, I think uh, covering uh, certain states, uh, Yobe states, Dapchi, Bamari, and uh, Kanama to uh, Niger border. And they're saying they're threatening that they are going to leave their duty post if they, nothing is done to address their situation. What about all the monies that's been expended to ensure that the welfare of operatives are better and the response of the army chief to this? <laughs> Talking about the response, for me, that response was, uh, was totally uncalled for. Um, I remember that in 2015, when the President Buhari was campaigning to, you know, become the president of this country, um, some of the things I heard from different quarters was, look, the, the insurgency war, you know, President Buhari being a major, former major general, what have you, you know, is the perfect person to help because you bring a word of experience to the work, you know, you'll be able to mobilize and, you know, rouse the troops better. These are the kind of things that we heard. And for some of us, you know, we thought that, oh, that sounds well, that sounds right, that, that will work. Unfortunately, it has been far from it. It has been totally far from it. You know, things like this, you expect that being a major himself, he knows the importance of, 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 of you, know, um, you know, due process, you know, in, 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 in an organ as the military, you know. People who are supposed to leave, just to get there. And this is, they are not about this, this information right now, is that, because we've been hearing about it for a while and that it's been going on. You know, the other thing is that this, this has little or nothing to do with money or resources. This is just pure administration. When people have served their time, you know, have served their, you know, when it's time for them to move, move them. Okay, Don't let just, somebody just... come and spend six months because they have Godfather somewhere. A major general would should know better. It's I would still want to hear your thoughts, your concluding thoughts on that. But I'm being told we have um, on the line, we've been expecting him, uh, the former director, SSS, that's Dennis Amakre, to share his thoughts um, on this uh, situation at the moment. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, good evening. How are you? Thank you for joining us. What's your take on the threat by some soldiers that they are going to leave their duty post if nothing is done to move them away from the height of the insurgency fight? Uh, this is a persisting, persisting problem. And uh, I think the military high command should uh, take a look, very, very close look at it. I am not personally happy about um, what the commander said when he heard that uh, some of the um, soldiers were agitating. Uh, we know that uh, the military is a disciplined force, 
But uh, when they have to stay or overstay their time in the war front, it makes them very, very uh, non-productive. And as a general, I think uh, you should address it and then, if possible, change them out. Now uh, they've gone ahead to write to the president, National Assembly, and all those places. Uh, that is not a very good sign. Because uh, uh, fighting soldiers are not supposed to uh, divert their attention to other issues than the, the job at hand. Okay, let me quickly uh, draw your thoughts to the bickering between the APC and the PDP at this time, trading blames on the security situation uh, in the country. What should be their priority in helping the military and the present administration in a fight against Boko Haram? You see, that's the problem again. Uh, Boko Haram insurgency has lasted for more than 10 years in Nigeria because we have politicized it. You know, so um, you have people pointing fingers at each other. Uh, we would have done it better. We would have done it better. And then, of course, right now, with all this agitation, there are also allegations of a huge, huge sums of money that are being uh, looted or whatever. So I, I, think, um, I think the politicians should uh, remove this politics out of this and then let us solve this problem so that the country can move forward. We cannot be fighting an insurgency for more than 10 years. I think it's unacceptable. Okay, still on that bickering, I, I want to take your thought on what the uh, security expert, um, he, he's, he goes by the name uh, Balo, um, he gave an interview uh, to Al Jazeera claiming that um, there is some effort to sabotage the fight against uh, Boko Haram by this administration. And the PDP is now saying that the APC should come out and stop deceiving uh, Nigerians. Is there any credibility to that accusation? Because that's what it is at this time. Uh, well, I know Ibn Balo. Ibn Balo is um, uh, the, the owner of uh, Executive House. It's a mercenary company in South Africa that was uh, hired by the last administration to help. And actually, they pushed back. You remember the, um, the was it two weeks um, uh, extension to the election uh, that the Jonathan administration brought? Yeah, these were the same guys that pushed back Boko Haram out of Nigeria before the election took place. Uh, but, you know, Balo is a mercenary, and, uh, of course, he's still looking for a job. Uh, but the thing is that um, it's the same politics we are talking about. Uh, there is no continuity. Because if there was continuity, they would have pushed, as they pushed them back, they would have left them there instead of allowing them, canceling that contract, and then these people were coming back into, into the country again. You know, uh, people see uh, this as so political that uh, nobody is continuing the project from the previous administration, which is a very bad thing for the country. All right. Um, what's your take on the withdrawal of troops from the fringes of uh, the Lake Chad region as is being uh, proposed by the federal government? Is this a good move considering where we are now, the recent um, attacks and increase in um, insurgency? Say that again, please. I don't get the early part of your question. Okay. Okay, um, the withdrawal, there is a proposal by the army and the federal government to withdraw troops from less volatile area um, of the insurgency, in the insurgency fight. It was announced recently. Um, I'm asking, considering what has happened since Friday, we know in uh, Kogi there, was a, there were killings, uh, in Bonu there was an explosion, in Bayelsa yeah. there was an abduction. So should yeah. this move continue in your opinion? Uh, well, you know, um, I don't know what they have, uh, have assessed because um, some of these uh, decision policy statements are being made by uh, after assessment of uh, the situation on ground. So I don't know what assessment they've made, but uh, I don't think um, with all this banditry going on and then you want to withdraw the military 
Uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, is the police ready to take over? Are uh, the police uh, equipped enough? Are they trained enough? Uh, do they have the capacity? Do they have the equipment to deal with it? So these are the things that they have to think about. Uh, but they are in government, so uh, government should also look at it in such a way that um, uh, it does not um, spoil their objective. Because Nigerians are just getting tired of uh, all these um, banditries and um, kidnapping and all the rest. They are having the high time 2020. We should be able to sit down and solve these problems now. We can solve them. I don't think they are beyond this country. All right, before I let you go, in trying to find a solution to the insurgency um, uh, war that we are at now, because that's what a lot of people are describing it as, the PDP and the APC, in place of the bickering that is constant between them, what should they be doing to help this administration in the fight? You know, what I even expect the political parties to do is to, is to educate, educate people, educate their followers on what politics is all about, on what uh, participatory democracy is all about. They are not even concerned with that, because as far as the population is illiterate about what is going on, then they can manipulate them the way they like. It's really a shame that the political parties are not standing up to their responsibilities in the country. You know, so I think uh, what instead of uh, pointing fingers at each other and abusing each other, they should be busy building up the electorate, teaching the electorate how to vote, how what what a vote actually means. You know, uh, a political education. That is what we need in the country now. And when the people are very much aware, they can make the, you know, uh, educated choices of what they want. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your thoughts on the program tonight. Th thank you very much for having me. All right. That was Dennis Makri, a former uh, assistant director of SSS here in Nigeria. You, you, you heard his thoughts. Uh, I did ask him the last question I asked, but just a summary of what he said. What's your take? Well, um... Beyond um, political education, I agree absolutely that political education is very important. You know, people need to make informed choices. However, beyond that, I think that um, the parties need to take it a step further by, you know, offering alternative policies. So she, she, you said somebody is there right now. I'm, I'm basically referring to the opposition party majorly. You know, you see somebody's there right now and they're not doing the right way. They're not, you know, providing, not, they're not handling the, the, the issue properly. What you then do is, and that's what is called constructive criticism. You say, oh, this is what we should be doing. You have done this. You are making the decision. You are withdrawing troops from those volatile, these volatile areas. You shouldn't do that. Rather, you should do this. Let the people see and then prove it. Show that that will work. Rather than just playing to gala, trying to you know make your, the other party as bad as possible, obviously for political gains. No, that's not what we want. Nigerians will see through the sincerity. If you say no, this is how we did when we're there. This is what you should be doing. This is this kind of policy you should be, you know. For example, I'm not a, a big fan of you know IE mercenary, but from what I'm hearing, it seems that it worked. You know when, when it was deployed. You know, so I'm not saying that we should go back to that, but things like that, alternative policies, alternative actions, course of action that can be taken by the government of the day. That's what they should be focusing on, not just saying, oh, you, you, you made it worse, you know, it wasn't as bad as this one, we're in power. You know, we want constructive criticism. Let Nigerians be the judge. Let them now know and see what you're doing and say, okay, when it's time for the next election, we we'll decide to, to follow you. That's how, how it should be approached. Okay, let's go back to the issue of the welfare of the troops, because that's one conversation that people tend to bring to the fore and say, ah, we can't be... Um, negligent of the welfare of these people that are at the forefront of this fight. When in 2020, we're still hearing murmuring among our soldiers that they are not being well taken care of, as the instance we're getting the information from your base states. The army has says, well, if they have a complaint, they should come and give to them what do you say about that? I say it's most unfortunate. I say it's, 
it's totally heartbreaking. These people are making the ultimate sacrifice you can make to a nation. Their lives are on the line. You know, even if everything is not working well, even if you play politics and you play and there is, um, what's it called, all kind of politicking and, you know, disorderliness and maybe your civil service everywhere, your military is not where you want to have that kind of thing. It is totally uncalled for. It is, like the gentleman said, it is demoralizing. It is totally unacceptable that people will be posted based on who they know, who know who, based on, you know, I have a godfather somewhere, somebody is at the same place over six years. It is totally uncalled for, totally unacceptable. I think it's a betrayal of trust to Nigerian what, what people. What should be the response when such a thing, we hear something like this coming from people who are, I mean, they should not have any distraction whatsoever Absolutely. in the fight again because their life is also at stake. Absolutely. So what should be the appropriate response from the military command on cases like this that are reported instead of being dismissive because that's what the media is um, reporting yes absolutely well i, I wouldn't even um, expect so much from the the air of the military the military command because they are the one to be blamed here they are the one you know on the spotlight here and but they are still the one that will address some of the challenges of these soldiers so is, they would they should have a better response absolutely but if they don't have a better response, what do you do i think that Especially considering the fact the, the, the character of our president, so being a, a former military in head of state, a major general, retired, I think that if the military are cannot do the right thing, I think it behooves on him, on his office, on the presidency to make them do the right thing. You know, because naturally they are defensive, they are dismissive, they are saying, look, you know, let them, they know where to. Because we know that if those appropriate quarters were working, why would these guys have to post? Me, you know, information on social media and what have you, and crying out for help. It is because those quarters are not working that they are crying out for help. So it, it, it's laughable that, they, that, 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 that their response has been that, oh, this guy should know where to go, who to talk to. I think I think what we need to do, what, what needs to be done, is for the leadership of the presidency, especially when we have the kind of president we have, to right, to say, what, what am I hearing there? This is totally unacceptable on my person, on my character. Being somebody who served in the army, you know, it, it, I think we need, they need to take it personally. The leadership, the presidency needs to take it personally and then get them to do the right thing that should not even happen at all that's it that's i mean if, in other civilized climbs, even if anything is not going well when it comes to the military they are always well taken care of there's no kind of injustice things are done the proper way and i think that's when you, when you now have this kind of war that we have in our hands that is what you know should be done that's anything less than that is totally unacceptable if you ask me i want to thank you very much daniel Absolutely. for coming on the program it's a pleasure all right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, the latest on the 2023 elections is next for conversations. Stay with us.